folks, thanks in part to global warming. It finally warmed up to about 29 degrees here in, in Maryland, in northern Maryland. It has been 15 during the day, but it's balmy 29, so today I'm going to put that sensor on. So in case we get snow, it's ready to go. Okay, folks, so I can actually reach that from under here after I took the wheel off. I th thought I was going to have to get up under there and get that off. So... <clears throat> What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pair of pliers on there and I'm going to squeeze that and pull that out. So hold on a minute, let me get the pliers in there, see if you can see. Okay, sorry, I couldn't hold the camera and do this at the same time, but I've unplugged that. Here's the sensor here. So I have to reach up in here, may have to climb in there, and I've got to get these, see that's got these rubber boots here that are in these brackets. I've got to get that out of there. Actually, I wonder if I can just, I don't, I don't want to be too rough with it because I may have to put it back on if that sensor doesn't work, but uh, I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, so I got the first two little rubber pieces, no problem, <clears throat> but this last one is kind of in a weird space, so I need to get the set. I may have to use a flathead screwdriver. And then I'm going to put this in a bag. I've got this little, <clears throat> I've got a little Ziploc bag for this so I can save this so it doesn't become damaged in case I have to put it back on. But then I'm going to take this brake caliper off and get that sensor out of there. Okay, so I got it out. I use this flathead screwdriver. Sorry, this is a flathead screwdriver to gently reach up under there and kind of pry that out of there so that I wouldn't damage the sensor cable. And now I just have to take the sensor off and put the new one on. And I also measured the ohmic value of that sensor. And it's almost exactly the same as the one I'm putting in there. Okay, so before I route that cable, or I actually did route the sensor cable, but before I put those boots, fit those rubber boots into the brackets, I want to start this up because there's a little self-test that does when you first start the vehicle up. And I want to see if that goes out. It may be as simple as looking for shorts and things, shorts, excuse me, opens, but uh, I want to start it up anyway before I go through the trouble of pushing those rubber grommets into the brackets. Okay, so the ABS light went out. I didn't expect much because um, I measured it ohmically and uh, it was fine but I just wanted to do that before I fit those rubber grommets in there because they're kind of a pain to get out so I'm going to put that in there I'm going to air up the tires you see there's a, a low air warning on the tires then I'm going to take it for a ride and we'll see what it does okay it's all connected now and it's routed um, there was some sort this is routed differently than it was before and uh, for this this cable went on top of here so I don't know if I want it underneath or not because if it's on top it can flap around and if it's underneath it's protected from this leaf spring here and it can't really go anywhere so I'm gonna leave it like that I'm gonna tighten up this brake caliper put the wheel back on and we're gonna take her for a ride check this out folks I just fixed two leaks last week and now I've got a new screw in my tire I had to replace some old repairs that they did. I put in some new ones um, and that stopped the leak for about a week and then I'm still losing air. What's going on? So I wanted to check my fixes and it turns out I picked up a new screw. Just so just that right, folks, let's go for a ride and let's see if the wheel sensor is going to work. So just FYI on that tire. Um, you know, for the first time ever, I got a little belt material out when I did that and that concerns me a little bit. Um, I want to have a blowout and uh, normally when I stick the reamer in what, what might be called a reamer in I don't really saw it back in and out and I don't do that much reaming sometimes I'll spin it around but I usually don't saw on it but today I did a little more and the reason is because is man these tires are tough getting those plugs in there so I did I did saw it in and out just a little bit but then I saw some um, I saw some belt material come out on the tire and I'm like oh I better not do that so then I just 
just pushed extra hard stuff that plug in there so I'll keep an eye on it hopefully hopefully it's fine I'll just have to make sure it doesn't get a bump in there and kind of watch the tire and make sure it doesn't get a blowout or it's not ready to get a blowout Okay, folks, I want to make this quick before my camera battery dies. It's been out in the cold today while I was doing this. Um, the sensor seems fine. Um, definitely no worse than it was before after I fixed it with, or fixed it with RTV. But uh, no errors from the sensor, which is good. Hopefully that'll last. And that means my four-wheel drive will continue to work throughout the winter. Thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. Before my battery dies, I want to make a quick note. Um, earlier I said the car does a self-diagnostic it goes up and checks the sensors and I said it may just look for an open but it could do a lot more than that let's say there's a known resistance that it has in the circuit it could put out a certain signal a certain frequency and look at how much voltage was on their known resistor and by looking at the voltage on their known resistor they could know the impedance of the sensor so perhaps and I don't know because I don't work for Nissan perhaps there's a little impedance measurement that it does when you just start the car up to make sure that the sensor is the right impedance so it may be a little more complicated than just looking for an open so that would be a good test to do look do an impedance check and do and look for an open which would they could be one in the same test because if a sensor was open, partially open, or corroded, or it, it would measure more voltage on the sensor and less voltage on the known resistance. And also if the sensor was maybe shorted, maybe some of the coils were burnt together, which is very, very unlikely, then you would see a lot more resistance or a lot more resistance voltage on the known resistor so just a quick thought thanks for watching the sensor seems to work great and uh, let's hope it just continues for years of service thanks again